Hello friends, welcome. Friends, uh, today morning, I actually happened to come across this news item, which is a little old, uh, six, seven days old. So this is the news item which saw uh, in the morning, which talks about that uh, DISH is an operator in US, which has launched carrier aggregation for 5G. So when I went into uh, this article, I figured out very interesting facts. So what it is saying is that um, the uh, American uh, service provider Boost, um, you know, uh, a service provider, uh, Boost Mobile, a brand of Dish Wireless announced the commercial launch of simultaneous 5G four carrier downlink and two carrier carrier uplink aggregation on its network with a peak speed reaching up to 1 Gbps. The company said that this week the customer across the country with a compatible handset will experience supercharged speed at, with, uh, across the boost network. Now, you might be thinking, you know, viewers who are op you know, watching this video might be thinking, what is this big deal uh, about, right? 1 Gbps, you know, our operators have been claiming 1 Gbps, 2 Gbps, 3 Gbps in their network anyway. So, this is not a big deal. But the big deal is, is there is a big deal. And like, let me explain to you what is this all about. See, this is because the frequency band, which is not there in the article, which I've captured in this PowerPoint slide, so if you look at this slide and I'll show you, which is very, very interesting and important, the frequency bands which they have been using doesn't have very huge amount of spectrum and these are bands which are fragmented. So look at, look at this band. There is 600 megahertz band, band 71. Then we have the another big band which is called band 70, which is between 2000 and 2200 megahertz. And then we have another band which is band 66, which is 1700 to 2200 megahertz. Now the slices of spectrum here in these bands are pretty small, 10 megahertz here in the first band, 20 megahertz here in the second band. And the third band is an FDD band. I'll explain to you the concept of FDD and TDD. They have converted this into TDD by combining these two blocks of spectrum, 15 plus 15 into 30. Now in India, we have huge amount of spectrum in 35 uh, megahertz band, which is 100 to 130 megahertz but in, as far as RGO is concerned and Bharti has got 100 megahertz spectrum. Now compared to uh, our uh, 5G spectrum quantum, these are minuscule. These blocks of spectrum are minuscule. So how they have been able to achieve such huge speed and good quality coverage by using small slices of spectrum. That's the whole point about the discussion. And you will know at the end of the day and you try to understand that why this is very, very important for India and what we need to do in order to ensure that this kind of philosophy can be deployed in India so that consumers as well as the operators can be benefited. So that's the whole point about this video. So let's go step by step. Otherwise, you know, we will not be able to understand what is going on. So what I have done is I have created a conceptual uh, PowerPoint, which I'm going to take you through first. Now, before I go and explain to you what this carrier aggregation is all about, I will like to go into the basics because the basics is very, very important. Now, what is this basic? The basic is that how signals in time domain gets converted into frequency domain. Now, what is time domain? Everybody knows that when a digital signal is processed into through a electronic system, which is a transistor or an IC or integrated circuit or a chip, this is in the form of ones and zero. So it is one here in the top square wave and then there is a zero here on the down below, right? So this is one, this is zero, this is one, this is zero like that. So there are streams of bits, which is one, zero, one, zero like that, which kind of flows into the system. And by recognizing this one and zero, you are, what you're doing, you are able to do computing. You're processing information, transmitting information. Now, if this is in this form of one and zero, how can these get, can get converted into frequency? What is frequency all about? Now for that, you have to look into this particular piece of the diagram. And let me explain to you, and we will not go into mathematics, which, and I don't want the people to get confused, right? 
what I want to say is that if you just take one single block of square wave, right? This block of square wave. I don't want to take the full square wave. I'm just taking one simple square wave. which starts here like this. And the full cycle is ends here. So like that, the, the square wave is taken. So this is the square wave. You see this square wave starts here and ends here. This is the square wave. Now, if you take this square wave and you do an experiment and you superimpose multiple frequencies, sine waves. Sine wave is this. This is sine wave, right? So this is sine wave. Now, what is the frequency of a sine wave? The frequency of sine wave is how many times this wave gets repeated over one second uh, of time. So if you measure the time period, this is the time period. This is T here and divide this T by one, that you will get frequency. That as simple as that. So you will have one sine wave, which is this particular sine wave. This sine wave, right? is the first sine wave with a frequency, let's say F1, right? The F1 here. Then we have another sine wave. If you see here, this is another sine wave like this, like this. And this sine wave has, has a frequency F2, right? And then we have got another sine wave, which is a frequency F3. And we are superimposing multiple such sine waves. So when you do that, then you will be able to see that you can approximately replicate the square wave. You see this? This is the resultant sine. This is the, uh, the aggregation of all the sine waves. So this is the output signal in time domain, right? This is the square wave, see? So this is what happens, right? In it is a practical, uh, you know, um, situation. It is, it is now no magic. So if you do this experiment yourself and you add multiple sine wave, aggregate them, you can faithfully reconstruct this square wave, and that is all, that is this all about. So time domain gets converted into frequency domain, and these frequencies f1, f2, f3, etc. If they are transmitted using a frequency spectrum band, then you can faithfully reconstruct this wave, square wave. That is the bits of information, ones and zeros. And that's how you transmit information, which is getting processed in the receiver. So it's getting generated in the transmitter in ones and zeros and gets processed in the receiver. That is as simple as that. You don't have to get into confused about it. This is the first concept. The second concept is uh, is also very important for the for you to understand what is carrier aggregation. This is called frequency division duplex bands, right? This is a concept. Now, what is frequency division duplex? Again, you don't have to be overwhelmed by this. So, when you are transmitting these frequencies, which I just explained to you, they get transmitted in a block of spectrum. So, this is the block of spectrum here. I'll show you the block of spectrum. Let me take my pen. So here is my pen here. This is the block of spectrum in frequency domain. You can see this? Now this block of spectrum is broken down into two pieces. It is not a single continuous spectrum. It is not like this, a single continuous. It is broken down in two pieces, piece number one and piece number two. Now you may ask why two pieces? Why not single piece? The reason is that when you are transmitting signal in one direction, the signal has to be received in the other direction, which is coming from the base station because the signal is going into the base station here and this base station is transmitting back to the mobile using the downlink. So when mobile, here is a mobile. Right? The mobile can be constructed like this. Let me construct the mobile like this. So mobile will have signaling signals transmitting to the base station like this. And then the same mobile will be receiving signal to uh, from the base station. Now, when you are transmitting signal to the base station, you have to use a different path altogether because these are simultaneous transmission and reception. These are not fragmented or separated in time domain. They are simultaneously happening just like you have cars moving in the road separated by a divider similarly these are considered kind of cars which are running parallelly and separated by a divider now you may ask a question that when the cars are running and you know they can why do why this two blocks of spectrum has to be separated by a band gap 
Why can't this be adjoining to each other? The reason is that unlike cars which have a monolithic structure and that structure can be preserved within a space, RF signals which transmits over this block of spectrum cannot be preserved you know, within this space. There is a spillover. So this is the RF signal. You see this is a signal like this signal is like this so what happens is that there is a portion of the signal which spills over out of the uplink and goes into this no man's land which is the band gap similarly in the downlink also the same thing will happen a portion of the signal will get superimposed or get percolate you know uh, it will go out of this band into this no man's zone now if you didn't have this band gap then what would have happened? This uplink transmission would have interfered with the downlink reception because there is no band gap. So because of this interference which you see here, that interference would have caused problem and that's why you have got two different blocks of spectrum separated out in space using a band gap in the frequency domain, right? So that's simple as that. Now there is one more point is that when you are transmitting in the upward direction, because the mobiles are small in nature, they have got battery which is a small and power also is a limited thing. The signal strength when you are transmitting in the upward direction is of lower uh, you know, uh, capability. It doesn't have that much amount of signal strength compared to the BTS which is powered by a generator or a power equipment which has got huge capacity to transmit and therefore this pipe which I show you, which I've shown you is of thicker nature to represent that the RF signals coming emanating out of the base stations are actually of higher uh, power and these are of lower power and that's why you will find that the uplink data capability is always low compared to downlink because the uplink signal strengths are lower and therefore the carrying capacity of the uplink from a throughput point of view is lower even though the block sizes of frequencies for both these uh, uh, bands which are separated out by this band gap are same. Because if this is 10 megahertz in the FDT, this will also be 10 megahertz. It is not going to be different, right? Conventionally, these are the same, but the carrying capacity is different only because of this RF signal strength. So this is basically called the concept of FDD, right? Frequency division, division, duplex. Now let's talk about TDD. So I will take you through TDD and TDD is a concept which is important before you understand carrier aggregation and we can relate to this article. Now TDD is a single block. This is not not made up of multiple blocks right this is a single block of spectrum we don't have a separation in 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 frequency domain which i showed you in the fdd where you have a band gap why you have a single block here you may have to make the band a little bit more simple and there are other technical reasons which i can't cover in this video because of lack of time but how the signal is separated out because as I told you that as you are transmitting, if you transmit in the forward direction and the reverse direction simultaneously, there will be interference, which I told you in case of FDD. So how they are separated out and how interference is prevented. Now, take this example here. Look at this particular picture. You will understand. So this is a tunnel. You see this tunnel? Now this tunnel is of single lane, right? But the traffic has to flow from the other direction also. Now what happens is that there are these kind of signals which are present before the tunnel. Now what when a traffic has to travel in one direction, this signal is made green. Now once it becomes green, the traffic will flow in this direction and as long as this, sig this uh, signal remains green, the traffic will continue to flow. Now after a certain moment of time, this will become red and all the traffic here will going to, going to get stopped and the traffic will start flowing from the other direction. So this is called typical TDD which means that signal will flow in one direction at a time. So it flows in one direction at a time and then when it receives, it will receive in the other direction at a time. So the slices of time is, is being distributed between uplink and downlink. So what is uplink? When the mobile is transmitting to the base station is uplink and downlink is the base station transmitting to the mobile. Now the distribution and time between uplink and downlink is done in such a way that uplink gets a smaller duration of time of the total time block. Let's say if you have a time block of T, then uplink may be getting 20% and the downlink gets a larger chunk of the pipe of the, of the time slot. And that 
represents higher throughput or download need. You know, you need to download more data and you may not be required to upload, uh, you know, huge amount of data. And that's why these uh, systems are generally asymmetrical in nature where downlink is of fatter nature, uplink is of a, of, a, of, a, of a little thinner compared to downlink. It may not be like that, but generally they are con constructed like this. Now coming to carrier aggregation, which is an important part of this discussion, which I want you to understand and that's how you will be able to understand why it is so important the team uh, the uh, the dish uh, uh, article is so so important so what dish has done is so if you look at this particular diagram you will see that there are three different bands let me just show you i think i went in the end of the presentation so here is the just a minute huh? here is the presentation so if you see this diagram you will find that there are three different bands right so I don't want to basically get confused with the name of the band. I'm just giving, there are three different bands. So band one here, there are band two here, right? And then there is a band three here, right? In case of DISH, all these three bands are FDD in nature, where I have shown one of the band in my diagram as TDD, right? Because I have basically I have mapped it into the India situation. Now what DISH has done is they have combined these three bands uplink a part of the uh, of the transmission by using an electronic combiner here you see the plus sign so let's look at this band the band number one has uplink here when signal goes here come come goes here goes here and gets into this combiner similarly the uplink of the second band goes here and gets into the combiner and then the uplink of the third band gets into, into the combiner. Just be with me, I'm written downlink here, let's consider uplink here, right? So it also goes and gets combined here. Now once get it combined here, then the, the combined signal here is of a larger uh, factor in, in nature, means it is of a larger uh, uh, capability compared to individual bands because the individual bands if you see if this is 10 megahertz this is 10 megahertz and let's say this is 15 megahertz i'm just taking up a number then what happens that each and every individual band or block of spectrum if you use in an isolated manner will have different capability of throughput right so there could be possibility that you use this this and this separately there is no need to aggregate them but if you do and if you use them separately in your network then what happens is that you will be able to serve more customers because if, let's say if you have 100 customers you can allocate uh, out of the 100 customers 30 customers here 30 customers here and maybe 60 customers here you can do that but individual customers at a time will get a throughput which will be limited by the width of this spectrum block. He will never be able to get a higher throughput than it is getting limited by the spectrum size of the spectrum block. Because the larger the spectrum block, the larger will be the throughput. Now, once you combine these three uplinks together in a single block of 10 plus 10 plus 15 which is 45 um, uh, mega uh, sorry uh, 35 megahertz then you have a block of 35 megahertz instead of 10 megahertz so that the individual even though the 100 customers are there so being served by uh, these um, uh, this network then what happens is that at a time an individual customer might be able to get a higher throughput or an uplink speed compared to when these bands are being or blocks of spectrum as being not combined to a technical carrier aggregation. See the carrier aggregation, they are combined electronically and they are sent to the base station in a combined manner. So that's called carrier aggregation. Similarly, the downlink path is also going to get combined. So the signal coming from the base station is getting combined and being combined in the downlink path and that it goes to the mobile phone so that it is a combined combine higher block of spectrum though it is uh, from a uh, practical perspective they are separated out in space but electronically they are combined and that is what we call carrier aggregation now why this carrier aggregation is very very important the reason the carrier aggregation is important and i would also like to basically say that once you do carrier aggregation one more thing before i get into the other part of the presentation is that one important aspect that you have to understand is 
that you cannot combine uh, you know carry as, as frequency bands which are not separated out in frequency domain for example you cannot combine 700 900 and 600 megahertz spectrum uh, if you have different blocks of spectrum in these bands you cannot combine them efficiently because what will happen is once you do the combining of these signal you need to pass them through this diplexer and this diplexer will add loss if these frequencies, these frequencies, let's say this is frequency 1, this is frequency 2, and this is frequency 3, and if these frequencies are not spread out in the frequency domain, means there is not a huge gap between them. So there will be a loss, and that loss will diminish the coverage of these bands, which will be counterproductive, and therefore you will see that if you are using 700, then you will basically combine it with 1800 or 2100, you will generally not combine it with 900 or 600, okay? Similarly, if you are combining 700, you may do uh, it with 2500 or 3500, but you will not combine, as I told you, that you will not combine 2300 and 2500 together because that will result in a, a, a suboptimal outcome. Now, what we can do? So, this is exactly what T-Mobile has done. T-Mobile has combined their blocks of spectrum to be able to do larger throughput. Now, one important point to note is that T-Mobile is not using 3500 megahertz spectrum band. Maybe it is using, but it is not being to, uh, shown in the, in, the, in the press statement. It is using low frequency band, which are basically within the uh, sub uh, 6 gigahertz range. And I, I think the maximum frequency block which I which, I, which saw here is uh, 2200 megahertz band right now this is important because the generally 5g spectrum as the perception is that it is should be half a larger block size and those block sizes are available in higher frequency band like 3500 26 gigahertz band but those bands have got lower reach you can't really have good coverage and you will have a very poor quality uh, in indoor penetration so what if you are able to exploit the capabilities of your existing band which are already at lower frequency and get a similar kind of speeds which you expect that 5G to deliver and that's why this carrier aggregation is extremely important because you need to combine this low frequency band which are segregated fragmented in space with a smaller quantum of spectrum like for example 700 megahertz reliance you has got 10 megahertz here in 1800 you know the operators have got 10 to 15 megahertz of spectrum 2100 is also similar, right? 2300, somebody has got it, it, it is spectrum, somebody has 40 megahertz, somebody has got 35 megahertz. These are smaller chunks versus in 3500 megahertz, somebody has got 100 megahertz, somebody has got 130 megahertz. So huge amount. And 26, somebody has got 1 gigahertz and some operators have got 800 megahertz. So those bands have higher quantum of spectrum, gives you higher speed, but it does not give you quality coverage. So what if you are able to do these kind of carrier aggregation in the low frequency band? Imagine the quality that of the net network will get improved and our country will become a much better 5G net will have a much better 5G network and consumer will have a better uh, experience now let's go to the practical problem that we are going to face once you start doing this right so that's where the discussion is and I'm going to take a very very sh short uh, uh, part of this presentation because I don't want to carry this far further let's look at the situation we have got 700 megahertz band right everybody knows that 700 megahertz band Reliance Geo has network 5G network is 700 but look at the 700 megahertz band we have got 10 megahertz spectrum and this is BSNL sitting on 10 megahertz spectrum this this block of 5 megahertz supposed to be given by railway and this is already occupied this is railway this is government so Reliance Geo is just 10 megahertz here this is though it is being shown back end but it is pro probably going to be given to uh, railways right so now what is the option for Reliance Geo right in order to do this kind of carrier aggregation path to enhance the quality of the network. So what Reliance Geo can do is Reliance Geo also has got 800 megahertz spectrum. So you see here Reliance Geo has got 800 megahertz. Let me just show you the 800 megahertz first and then I'm going to tell you what Reliance Geo can do. 800 Reliance Geo has got 10 megahertz, right? And then you have got 1800 megahertz spectrum. Now 1800 if you see Reliance Geo this is red in many places they have got 10 megahertz spectrum right you see 10 megahertz some places they have got 15 megahertz 20 megahertz etc and then we have got 2300 megahertz band reliance geo has got 40 megahertz of spectrum and then we know everybody knows 3500 etc so leave that part now what i am going to what i am trying to say is that let 
because Reliance Jio has launched standalone 5G. So let the 4G network be moved to 800 and 2300 megahertz band only. Let it be that. And 1800 megahertz band, <clears throat> which they are currently using for, for uh, 4G, can be converted into 5G. And that spectrum can be combined with the 700 megahertz band in the manner which I have just, just described here. You see here, this is what they can do. So what they can do is, they can basically use this 700 megahertz here. This is a 700 megahertz here. And this 1800 megahertz band here, which can be of uh, 10 megahertz, 15 megahertz, 20 megahertz. So they can basically combine this 15 megahertz or 20 megahertz of this spectrum. Let's say, let's assume that it is 20 megahertz with 10 megahertz and create a factor pipe here of 30 megahertz, right? Uplink. Similarly, they can do the same thing, 30 megahertz downlink, right? By doing that. So what happens is that the quality of the network becomes better. It will be better than what you see today because these two blocks of spectrum can get combined and both can do 5G. And you can basically have your 4G separately. And in order to add further capacity, you can also combine in the 3500 megahertz band so that your downlink capability or um, your ability to basically download because of it is, it is, is enhanced because here it is being shown as uplink but just reverse the arrow uh, in this direction and you can say that I have got how much spectrum on the uplink 10 10 here uplink here let's say 20 and then we have got 30 megahertz uplink downlink how, how much 10 here 10 plus uh, uh, and then we have got 20 here 30 and then you add the 100 100 megahertz on top of it 130 or 160 megahertz of downlink imagine that so this is what Reliance Geo can do that will further enhance but there could be another thing which the government can do which is very very important the government can move BSNL because BSNL is holding a huge amount of spectrum in 700 and which is killing the Indian 5G aspiration as I told you that low frequency band two low frequency band should not be combined because of losses because Reliance Geo cannot combine 800 and 700 as I already told you right but if Reliance Geo was to expand their spectrum in 700 megahertz by another 5 or 10 megahertz, then they can have a very, very good quality 5G network. And what will happen to BSNL? The government can move BSNL in the 800 megahertz spectrum band. Look at there are a lot of spectrum available in the 800 megahertz spectrum band. And there will be another advantage to this whole thing is because if the BSNL moves to 800 megahertz spectrum band, which is a mature technology with a lot of 4G devices available and everybody is moving to 4G and 2G is getting abundant, then BSNL can do this. BSNL can move out of the 900 megahertz spectrum band, which they are holding 6.4 megahertz in all the circles. And this will free up 900 megahertz band will allow Vodafone Idea and Bharti to expand their 900 megahertz spectrum bandwidth in the low frequency band they can park their 4G services in 5 megahertz and rest of the capacity they can use for 5G and do the same kind of carrier aggregation using their 1800 megahertz spectrum or 2100 megahertz spectrum. Let's leave the 1800 aside. Let's look at the 2100 megahertz spectrum for Bharti because Bharti has got huge amount of spectrum in 2100 megahertz spectrum band. So if you see here, we have got so much amount of spectrum in 21, all green, green, green. They can do the 2100. Similarly, Vodafone can also do 2100 they can choose between whatever they want to do so for bharti the biggest problem in order to have this carrier aggregation capability though they can use carrier aggregation also but it is important to have a low frequency band with adequate capacity if you don't have a low frequency band with adequate capacity then your carrier aggregation the advantage of carrier aggregation that you want to realize is not going to work what is the point in doing carrier aggregation in high frequency band where you have already have 100 megahertz of spectrum in 3.5? It's a complete waste. I would say that it's a complete waste of money. And even the handset prices are going to increase because of carrier aggregation. With maturity, of course, they, they, with economies of scale, the prices will fall. But low frequency band, important. The, if you really want to save 5G in India, let me tell you that you cannot do it without making sure that the operators in India at least have 20 megahertz spectrum in either 900 
or in 800 or in 700 or in 600 one single band not in multiple bands because you cannot do carrier aggregation as I told you that is the reason why it is important the government to focus now on their spectrum strategy in the low frequency band they in India by just doing high frequency band and thinking that we have done 5G the problem is not going to get solved look at what these people are doing in US look at T-Mobile they are also going to do the same thing what DISH has done and they are able to get that kind of bandwidth they are not looking at high frequency band for carrier aggregation if you want to do it that's good enough you know maybe you will get a little bit of uh, you know better uh, quality or better capacity but you need coverage you just don't need capacity in 5G so friends I, I don't know how I get really passionate about this because I don't know why people are not focusing on this problem this is the problem to solve there is no other problem here to you know more important than this problem about solving the low frequency band issue in India and that's why BSNL making sure that the BSNL optimizes their network make sure that they are able to do the right thing because in this auction in 800 megahertz band if you see 800 megahertz band lay waste nobody took in this auction, Reliance did not bid in this band. So why are you wasting this precious spectrum in 800 megahertz band? Tell me. Why can't you move BSNL out there? Or at least don't give railways this 5 megahertz of spectrum here. Because you can imagine the kind of wastage that you're creating. Government here 10 megahertz. Railways here 10 megahertz. Another 5 megahertz you're going to give to railways. BSNL holding a 10 megahertz. What a waste. What a waste, you know, of, of natural resources. I do not know what is going to go in for India. Anyway, friends, I can't do anything more than this. I can only speak and talk, right? But somebody has to act. Somebody has to really act to make this a viable option for Indians. We Indians, right? Mobile operators will anyway make money to the stock market. We do not have anywhere to go. We have only the four, uh, two, three options, actually two and a half options. So they are their valuation is going to increase, but we as a consumer is going to be su going to suffer, and that is why I am passionate. I am not passionate because I am basically thinking about the mobile operator's health. Yes, they need to be healthy because otherwise they will not be able to provide their service. But they will be healthy anyway because there are no options available in this market. You have only three players in this market and even if you are getting a service which is 20% or 30%, you have no other option but to pay what they will ask you to pay. Okay friends, thank you very much for your time. I'll come back to you with a new video next time.